Mount Everest in the Himalayas is the highest mountain on Earth. In the past, only a few mountaineers were able to climb Mount Everest, but today there's a real drive to see who can make it to the top, with climbers from all around the world regularly visiting the largest mountain in the world. The difficult ascent is expensive, with local Sherpas usually accompanying mountaineers from all over the world. Even if many more mountaineers try the ascent today, there are always difficult and even fatal situations, and it's not uncommon for mountaineers to let their companions down. We'll explore some of the reasons for this in today's video. Climbing Mount Everest is without a doubt one of the greatest adventures one can experience, but it involves many dangers. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with our future videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn one of the most shocking facts about climbing Everest. Attack of Angry Sherpas You may often hear about Sherpas in regard to Mount Everest. Usually, they guide the climbers to the summit. In this example, however, the climbers had to abandon the climb of Mount Everest because they were attacked by angry Sherpas. Climber John Griffith, who was attempting to climb with other companions at the time, gave up because he said he was afraid the Sherpas would stone them to death. In order to flee from them, they put up with dangerous crevasses. This was preceded by an argument with the Sherpas on the way up to Camp 2. Griffith claims that the Sherpas were not willing to talk but threatened them with stones. Griffith continues to claim there was only a verbal altercation. He had no idea why the Sherpas then became so aggressive. Fearing the Sherpas, they fled, not taking the established route, but descending dangerous glaciers with huge crevasses. In retrospect, Griffith learned that anger and frustration had been building among the Sherpas for years. They felt unfairly treated by the Western climbers, and recently this feeling had increased more and more. The concerned Sherpas said one of their men had been intentionally injured by the paying climbers, and because of that, they felt Griffith and his colleagues had shown them no respect. Corpses by the Wayside The highest mountain in the world has a macabre nickname. It's also often called the largest open-air cemetery in the world. Since Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay first scaled Mount Everest in 1953, many climbers have followed them. Some stayed on the mountain. The upper part of the mountain is also called the death zone. The oxygen content is only a third of sea level. Barometric pressure makes the weight feel ten times heavier. The combination of both causes the climbers to become exhausted very quickly. They'll often begin to feel sluggish and disoriented. Organs can become extremely stressed. A maximum of 48 hours in these extreme situations is possible, and many climbers die. Usually, they're left in the exact place where they found death. They serve as a reminder to other mountaineers. Anyone who finds death in the death zone cannot be recovered. The weather conditions, the terrain, and the lack of oxygen make it all but impossible to recover the body. The Garbage Problem Climbers who climb Mount Everest say that you don't actually need a trail map to get to base camp. It's enough to follow the trail of garbage. More and more people are climbing the world's highest mountain, bringing a lot of gear with them. Much of it stays behind on the mountain. Volunteer teams try to get the mountains of rubbish under control. Plain junk, human waste, oxygen canisters, torn tents, plastic, and leftover mountaineering gear. That's what's left on the way to the summit. The increasing global warming also ensures that the bodies of mountaineers who died on the mountain are also found. However, the cleaning actions are only a temporary solution. As soon as the mountaineering season starts again in the Himalayas, the tons of garbage will come back. There are various programs that Nepal wants to use to solve the garbage problem on Mount Everest. There's a garbage tax, for example, but it's ridiculously low given the price of a Mount Everest expedition. Yeti The Yeti myth has existed for ages. 
In 1951, British explorer Eric Shipton found a footprint while looking for an alternative route to Mount Everest. Believing the imprint to be human, he took a picture of it and the Yeti was born. The huge footprint looked like a human foot with a thumb. This indicates a great being. Since then, the snowman has been sought again and again. Further investigation raised the question of whether the tracks could be the footprints of a bear. DNA traces point to the polar bear as the closest relative. However, there are also mysterious, unexplained sequences in the DNA. Further investigation shows that the tracks are not from a new unknown animal, but from a known animal with an incomplete DNA sequence. In the end, we still don't know whether the Yeti exists or not. To this day, it's not known whether the footprints are a very shy animal or whether it's a type of human being who lives in the almost untouched wilderness and whom no one has ever seen. First Ascent of Mount Everest in 1953, the British expedition led by Sir John Hunt set out to climb the highest mountain in the world. This expedition included 10 climbers, 350 porters, 20 Sherpas, and tons of supplies. There have been unsuccessful attempts to scale the summit before. In 1950, a southern access to the mountain was discovered. The first ascent was made in 1953. Edmund Hillary was a well-known mountaineer. In 1953, he'd reached the peak of his performance. The Sherpa Tenzing was one of the best summit guides in Nepal, so they formed a strong team to conquer Mount Everest. On May 29, 1953, at 11.30 a.m., they reached the highest point on Earth. They only stayed at the summit for 15 minutes before beginning the descent again. It was very important to the Indian and Nepalese press to point out that the Sherpa was the first to reach the summit. They wanted to show that the local mountaineers are at least as good as the foreign summiteers. To circumvent this political issue, Hillary and Tenzing agreed never to mention which of the two men actually set foot on the summit of Mount Everest first. Years later, Tenzing revealed in his autobiography that it was Hillary who first stood on top of the world's highest mountain. The Third Pole there are people who refer to Mount Everest as the Third Pole. This is based on the fact that the North and South Poles naturally describe the northernmost and southernmost points on Earth, and the top of Mount Everest is consequently the highest point on Earth. Many myths and mysteries remain unsolved to this day. For example, it's not known to this day whether the mountain was conquered in 1924 as had been claimed by many. Back then, on June 8th of that year, Mountaineers George Mallory and Sandy Irvine set out to climb to the top of the world. They wanted to stand where no one had stood before. They were last seen 800 feet below the summit. Did they stand on top of Mount Everest? Nobody knows. Irvine reportedly carried a Kodak camera to record their attempt. In 1999, more than 75 years later, Mallory's body was found at an altitude of 8,250 meters. In his book, The Third Pole, Mark Sinnott tells the story of Mallory and Irvine. The Biggest Mystery of Mount Everest whether Mallory and Irvine conquered Mount Everest in 1924 is actually not only the biggest unsolved mystery of this mountain, but in the entire history of mountaineering. If so, they reached the summit a whopping 29 years earlier than Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay. The problem is that the camera Irvine is said to have been carrying has not been found to this day. It may contain images of Mallory and Irvine at the top of Mount Everest. Another unsolved mystery. What happened to Irvine and Mallory? How did they die on the mountain? Mark Sinat didn't just write the third pole. An article by him about the search for traces of what is probably the first successful summit attempt on Mount Everest was also published in National Geographic magazine in 2020. He set out to solve the biggest riddle about the highest mountain in the world. He wanted to find Irvine's body. 
Mallory's remains were found during an expedition in 1999. At the time, it was first believed to be Irvine's body, as it was found where Irvine's ice pick had been discovered. There are many more mysteries surrounding Irvine and Mallory. That's how Mallory's green-tinted goggles were found in his pocket, a hint that he might have descended from the mountain at night and didn't need the glasses. His watch stopped between 1 and 2 o'clock. No one knows whether this was during the day or at night. He also said before the expedition that he would take a picture of his wife to the summit to leave there. When his body was found, he did not have a picture with him. This indicates that he must have been at the summit. Mallory had no sign of a camera. Noel O'Dell last saw Mallory in Irvine on June 8, 1924 at 12.50 p.m. He was her teammate and said he saw the two about 800 feet below the summit and they were moving quickly up. A Chinese Everest veteran named Xu Qing said in 1960 that he had discovered what he believed to be Sandy Irvine's body during a Chinese expedition to Mount Everest. He made his discovery while descending from the highest camp at 8,510 meters. Mark Sinnott found exactly this spot with the help of GPS data during his expedition. It quickly turned out that this place which Jing had called a crevice was just a narrow crack in the rock far too narrow for a person to crawl or fall in there. The gap was definitely empty. Scott also failed to resolve the many questions surrounding Sandy Irvine, and perhaps the highest mountain on Earth will never reveal its secret. The Man Who Climbed Everest in High Heels Everest has seen the interest of many interesting people over the years. For the most part, many of these men and women are of a solid mindset and seek to climb Everest for the fame and gloating rights. However, one man had an even more bizarre idea that landed him in history books for a much more unbelievable reason. Maurice Wilson was an Englishman who, in 1933, devised a plan to fly toward the northern slopes of Everest and crash his plane on purpose. He planned to then climb up to the summit of Everest and leave his plane behind. He trained many months for this expedition, spending much of his time in Britain hiking and learning to fly a gypsy moth plane before spending the following winter in Darjeeling. Once he set up shop here for a few months, he began to prepare for his ascent by fasting and praying repeatedly. In his eyes, this was all he needed to do in order to secure a successful climb to the peak of Everest. Later on during his preparations, Maurice began to realize that his idea of crashing his plane on Everest wasn't very wise. Thus, he decided to abandon this portion of his plan and made his way toward Mount Everest on foot on May 22, 1934. After beginning his journey, it didn't take long for him to realize he bit off much more than he could chew. He wasn't prepared for the terrible weather conditions whatsoever. He also had a serious lack of climbing experience and didn't bring much equipment with him either. Before long, he became blocked in by an ice wall and could neither continue his journey nor make it back home. His final diary entry was noted as being written on May 30th, so he most likely passed away later that day or early the day afterward. His body wouldn't be found until the following year, and rumors began to circulate that he was found dressed in nothing but women's lingerie. While this story was never completely confirmed, it began to spread around like wildfire. What would this man have possibly been doing on the world's tallest and coldest mountain wearing nothing but women's underwear? Before long, this rumor began to die down and people believed it was nothing more than a made-up story. However, it didn't take too long for the story to gain traction once again a couple of decades later in 1960. In 1960, a Chinese team of climbers came across a very strange discovery while they were climbing the mountain. They stumbled across a high-heeled shoe from a woman's outfit. They couldn't seem to understand what a shoe like this would be doing on Everest. However, when they announced this discovery, it didn't take long for memories of Maurice Wilson to begin flooding the minds of avid climbers once again. It would seem that this was the only evidence remaining of Maurice's ascent of Everest. After all these years, it seemed that it was most likely true. Maurice had, in fact, begun climbing Everest while wearing women's clothing. 
News soon broke with claims that Maurice had been a crossdresser, and this was only further amplified when people began to discover that Maurice had previously been working at a women's clothing store in New Zealand before becoming obsessed with the idea of climbing the world's tallest mountain. Many myths and legends exist about Mount Everest, but what about you? If you had the physical ability to do so, would you be interested in standing on the top of the earth? Could you imagine it? Let us know in the comments of today's video. Thank you for watching. Click on one of the pictures and watch another exciting video. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and to never miss new videos again, click subscribe and we'll see you again soon.